So we have the great pleasure to introduce uh, Paulus. He goes by the name Prince Kandoza. He's from Namibia and he's a tech activist there. He's in the executive for the Python, for the Python Society of Namibia. So we look forward now to listening to his talk about building an intelligent chatbot in Python. Uh, okay, thank you for the introduction. Uh, as you all see the topic, I'm going to take you through uh, how to build, let me say, build a simple, intelligent chatbot. So this will be like introduction, uh, how to come up with a uh, chatbot. As you all know, I hope we all know what this chatbot is. Great. Uh, okay, uh, the next slide, I have uh, some bulletin there that I'm going to take you through. I'm going to explain a bit what is chatbot. Uh, going to take you through the usage of the chatbot and the types of the chatbots and the framework for developing chatbot in Python and the, just a bit of demo demonstration. Uh, what is there is chatbot just simply the software uh, that keep conversation between a human being and the computer. So as you can say, it's an intelligent chatbot or intelligent software. It's something that assists the people uh, to get more information in the shortest time or sh shortest time framework, meaning you don't need to hassle waiting uh, information from people or from the business that you want. So that was, that's the basic uh, uh, reason for the chatbot or the design of the chatbot. That's simply the basic of it. So the second one says, receive the command from the user and the response back in a satisfactory way to the user. Yes, that's the main behind of it, is to convince the person or a client or a user. So the user asks the information that he or she wants, then the chatbot responds in a satisfiable manner. So it's a 24-day availability at a reduced cost. So this basically means it's available the whole day, 24 hours. So if you have a business and you, when you have a business, you only work eight hours during the day. After that, you close your business. But if you want to keep uh, running your business throughout the day, what you need is just a chatbot. So this can keep your business uh, by not spending a lot of money. So let me say you have a startup business. So, and your capital is not that much. Meaning what you have to do, you have to spend more on chatbot rather than keep paying, I'm not saying in a good, in a bad manner like to reduce the employment, but as a startup, you have to think other ways around. So instead of employing 20 employees, maybe you can employ 10 people at the beginning. Then you automate all your information to the chatbot, isn't it? So just to, so that you keep your business running. Uh, 
It's a compatibility for the old devices, including mobile, social networks, even the SMS. So it doesn't have a really restriction when it comes on the devices. It can adapt wherever devices it can be, mobile, and all the social networks. Uh, as you can see that there are a lot of sectors that the chatbot can be implemented or embedded on, like e-commerce. One of my friends here was just looking up the, the, the phone from the United States. He didn't make a call. He just went to the website. Then the chatbot pops up. So just imagine if the website doesn't have a chatbot, he has to send the email or make a direct call. And they already know the email story. The person going to reply tomorrow or the following day, but he wants the information now. What? So if the business implemented that chatbot on the website, the person can get the information in a second. So that's reason for the e-commerce. Education, when it comes to education, it's also a very important part for the students, staff, and the stakeholders. So I remember when my first year when I went to the University of Namibia, you know, I came from, in Namibia I came from the deep villages, it's not in town. So where the network is not good, the access to the phones is, you know, not that much, no computers. So I have to come to window to get more information about the registration, uh, university in general. So, but if I have the access to the phone, and the, and the university has the chatbot, or the, I have access to the computer, this thing can, could have helped me a much. If I just go to the website, then I ask more information from the chatbot. Because some people, they don't know. Let me say all the information on the website, but some people, they don't know how to interact with the website. They don't know how to get more information on the website, although the information they are on the info, on the website. So some people they don't know that. But if there's a chatbot, then you chat like as if you are chatting to to a next person. Then he can help that person to get more information or to get what he or she wants. Finances, he comes to the banks and so forth. Chatbot can also help here for the request your like your accounts information, balances, and so forth. Also the HR systems or the sectors also using the chatbot, inquiring about the employees information and so forth. And they also healthcare to ask for their health passports and so forth. So there are a lot of sectors that chatbot can be embedded on. There are a lot, of those, just are some of them, but there are a lot that the chatbot can be used. <coughs> so you can see the, the market, chatbot markets. It's worth that huge amount of money by 21st. So, you know, a lot of businesses now, they are trying to implement the chatbot platform to increase their customer services and also the income flow. So it's very something that promising in the business sector. And I hope we all have to look at this as we are all presenting here. Maybe just for, if you see that your business is not going well, 
thing of chatbot for the interaction with customers. Because if you have a website, a person can go to the website, but if there's nothing that can convince a person to go further with your website, the, if the interactions are less, that person will just close the website and go search another, another business. But if you have a chatbot, the moment you go to the website, something pops up with a good man. How are you? How can I help you? you? That interaction keeps the person on the website or interesting on keep checking your, your information or products on that. So, chatbot expect to cut the business cost by 8 billion by 20. Yeah, it's, it's true. Since Chatbot is like artificial intelligence where people are scared to lose jobs. We are moving to that uh, uh, living lifestyle of where everything can be automated. Everything, we let the system to do everything for, for all the human beings. But it's not meaning all the people will be jobless, no. We are just making life easier to our clients, to our customs, and very accessible to everyone. Uh, so the disadvantage of the chatbot, they're not decision making, so this is true. If you, are, if you are a chatbot developer, or a programmer, or an engineer, you must consider decision making when you are developing your chatbot, so that to avoid uh, disappointing your clients. Because the person gonna ask, uh, what's the price of your iPhone 7? Then the chatbot say, it's 100 Namibian dollar. That's something not good, it's not convincible. So, so those are types of decision that you must implement on, or you must be careful when you are implementing. Time consuming, yes, you know, our countries are, are still developing, especially my country, Namibia. If I have, if I'm implementing, if I have a business, then I'm implementing the chatbot. But I don't have a good and a fast internet. It will frustrate the, the client for the responding or for the chatbot to take the information from the server or wherever it is. So the network infrastructure plays a bigger role for time consuming for the client. Inability to understand. Uh, if a chatbot doesn't understand the query from the user, it's also a problem. So we must try all the best as you are going to be a chatbot developer or a programmer just to make sure that at least you uh, de develop your chatbot in the, in the ways that the user and the clients gonna understand. Ah, we are going to, I take you through the types of the chatbot. I have rule based chatbot and the artificial based chatbot. But I'm going to focus more about the rule based uh, not rather than uh, not at more on artificial intelligence chatbot. So uh, rule based is a chatbot that has set of it's like you have a knowledge base where you put your answers and questions to the chatbot. As again, the chatbot can handle simple queries but fail to manage complex. Because I hope you all know why. Here we are not yet on the artificial part where the chatbot is going to make decision if you have a lot of uh, queries then the chatbot, artificial chatbot, what it does, it goes through what is matching in that uh, 
uh, knowledge base, then uh, respond to the users. Uh, so, uh, okay. It uses some of the heuristic to select the response from the library of predefined responses. Uh, like you have a knowledge base for it. Uh, the chatbot make decision from that knowledge base you upload on it. Uh, yes, this make more intelligent as they take weight by weight from the query and generate the answers. So, AML is the very simplest framework to use to develop a chatbot in Python. So, I'm going to take you through a bit how to use that. But before I go to the demo, I just want to take you through some of the tags, features that uh, AML use. So, Alice was the first bot that was developed using that artificial intelligence uh, markup language. And I hope if you are have used chatbot before, you know what is allies mean. So, uh, MA is also any XML based makeup language to create artificial intelligence application. ML makes it possible to create human interfaces while keep implement implementation simple to program. So here you don't need huge uh, amount of skills in programming because uh, this framework keeps implementation very simple. It's not a command line base, it is an interface for you. So if you start learning chatbot using this at framework, I guarantee by the end of the day, you're going to be happy with, your, with yourself. Easy to understand and the highly maintainable. So if tomorrow you are not there, the next person who will be there won't be struggled with when you're using this framework. So those are the, some of the tags, because AML acts like a HTML. If you are a web developer, this, you might find something similar like this, where you have to define HTML first when you are developing a website, and in the end you have to close it. So it's the same with the ML. So it has those tags, ML and the category, pattern, and the template. So the last two kind of very important. Since pattern define the, defines the pattern to match what a user may input, this section is where, the, is where you are going to put the, your questions as you expect them from the user. If you, if you are saying, uh, where can I find Johannesburg in South Africa? That's a question that you're gonna put in, that, uh, in those texts between t uh, uh, pattern. Template is, you are, is what you expect from the board. So if the answer of the question, where, where is Johannesburg in South Africa? The answer may be Central South Africa. Central South Africa is what you are going to put in between the template. Take. So that's just illustration of it. So that's just an example of how to use, of how to use the, those takes, the, the previous uh, takes, how to use them. As you can see, that, uh, the template uh, in the pattern. Pattern, what are you? It's a question that you expect from the user. And the template, hello user. It's an it's a answer from the board. So, in the category, if you are a web developer, it's like a body. So you define a body first, 
and the last close the body. It's the same here, it's a category. Whatever you are doing must be inside of the category. If it's outside, boot can't define it or can't pick it up. So that's just some of the basics that you must sketch up. Because if you understand this, if you are a beginner, or maybe have average skill over the chatbot, if you have this skill, I know you're gonna try a lot of frameworks that suits you. So, but it's just a basic for you to uh, get that knowledge. So, these are just the results. The user hello and the boot hello user. What are you? I'm a boot city. So, <laughs> so you can see that there are a lot. We have around. I didn't. Even, did I mention this? that we have around 14 tags that we normally use in Emma. So those were first one and plus this one. They're a lot. So you're gonna, I'm going to show you this, how to use them on the framework itself. But as long as you understand these tags, like you have a, a set of questions and answers, you can simply define them inside of random tags. And what the boot does, it goes, if a, if, a, if a person asks the question, how many countries in Africa? And inside of random, you put around 54 or 60 countries. So what does boot is go through the, uh, all the countries, then it counts. Okay, 60, then it gives you. There are around 60 countries in Africa. So that is what does, or you have a query of questions, the users ask a specific question within those maybe 10 questions. What boot does, it goes through, then picks a specific set of, uh, specific set of statement that is matching to the question, then gives the answer to the bot. So, if you understand those things, it will make your life simple to, to, uh, to, to develop a chatbot with ML. So that's basically what you need to know if you want to become an ML chatbot developer. If you know those things, there are only 14. And imagine, at the university, how many modules have you learned? They are around 56 for the undergraduates. And these takes are just 14. I, I wish you are going to struggle with this. You won't. So maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes to go through these takes. Then from there you are fine. You can develop a simple board from what you have learned. So it's just a random response that I was talking about. You see you have a lot of the and the question, it's only one question, so. And the boot go through and take what is matching. So, the term that I want to do, I don't know, how many minutes I have? 10, okay. Uh, let me see what I can do. Uh, this is a framework for for Emma. Uh, it uses the gate to boot editor for you to develop uh, IML chatbot. You use this uh, editor. So what it does, as you can see, the they say place a create a new workstation. So you just click on it. Uh, 
Ah, okay, sorry. I have to bring it here. I don't know why I can't see it. Because there's a, a, a window pops up that you need to, I don't know why you can't see it. Okay, can you see the, this box here? It's where you put your, uh, let me say, uh, PyCon essay 2019. Enter. So it brings up you like that. Then here you just select what is English. I um, I don't know, I can't see it, but if you select English here, it also highlights the natural uh, processing language features thing. Then you say, then you say done, sorry, say done. Ah, uh, here you, you have now to create the file that you are going to work with. Uh, you can say, Icon South Africa Icon South Africa twenty nineteen chatbot. So you can see it comes down here. Uh, you just need to click on it on the file that you are going to work with. As you can see, the template, the format has already done for you. So what you need to do, uh, the patterns are already defined for you. You just need to put, that's a default message comes, but you can delete it. You can you put yours? Let me just say, maybe, Hi. Uh, can you see the text that I was talking about? So the moment, as you can see the difference now. Uh, pattern text is what the user must put. The moment you click on the template, the system knows already that this uh, it's a board, so it brings up all your text that you need to put inside of the template. So you can now select, like if you want to use the, uh, like a tag uh, get, a random uh, set, or whatever, you can put it inside there. Then what you need to do you just, you just click on it, then it comes up. Might be random. Uh, you see, it's already highlighted. So just click on it once, then you put whatever, you, you can now put 
the, your statement inside there. So it's very, very simple. Let me just say five minutes, okay. Ah, question. Hello, user. Then you save. Save is here. Save all. Then you can say test. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's down here. Uh, you put what you put what you have put between the pattern. You say hi, then you enter. Uh, you can see the response. I don't know if you can able to see it. Can you see it? Somewhere here, yeah, this one. So, somewhere there. So it's a good framework. The end. Very simple to program. So uh, f uh, for the time being, uh, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope you learned something. And yeah, thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Kandosa, for that uh, talk and the demo as well. We, we have time for just a, maybe one or two questions, if there are any. There is one at the back. Hi, I just want to know if uh, this is part of a, a research project at the university or something? Uh, it was no. part of my... Uh, undergraduate. Oh, and I don't see the, the name of the, the the software you're using. Is it like an interface that allows you oh, to code? Uh, no, uh, it's an editor. Okay, let me. Uh, it's an edit. Yeah, it's here. It's an editor for AI ML. Yeah, it's an editor. And where does the Python um, code, is it integrated inside? Yeah. Somewhere. And do you know maybe which packages uh, or something no, no, are you used inside? No, no, you don't need a package. Hmm? No, you don't need a package. Oh, okay. You just need to, to have this editor, then you can develop ML. Oh, well, okay. Thank you so much. I think there was one here in front. How close are you to passing the Turing test? Sorry? How close are you to passing the Turing test? I can get you. The, the Turing test is if you can create a chatbot that the user can't tell if it's a chatbot or a human. My question was how close are you personally to passing that test with your chatbots? To pass the text to the chatbot? To make a chatbot that you can't tell whether it's a chatbot or not when you talk with it. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, are you a chatbot developer? Are you a chatbot developer? Sorry? Are you a chatbot developer? No, I was just asking how close the chatbots that you've made. Sorry, I was wondering how close the chatbots that you've made are to being indistinguishable from humans. No, uh, I haven't. Okay. I haven't done uh, like uh, industrial chatbot yet. I, I I just learned it, but I haven't uh, deployed. What uh, I just did personally, and what I have presented before. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending this session, and thank you as well, uh, Kandoza, for the talk. So we can now have uh, some tea. They said we do consume a lot of coffee here, so you're welcome to consume more. And uh, after in afterwards, there's going to be making sense of Cape Town using NLP in this room. And you are still welcome to join the open spaces, as was mentioned. Uh, helping kids to code. <laughs>